It is what they call a butte. Meatloaf is comfort. It's what you want for dinner. It's what you want for lunch. And maybe there's a breakfast leftover. Meatloaf is deliciousness. It's ground meat that's tenderized and bound with breadcrumbs and dairy and eggs and aromatics. Meatloaf is the epitome of home cooking. It's elementary. My name is Todd Coleman. I'm the creative content director at the Spruce Eats. I'm gonna show you the quintessential Spruce Eats meatloaf. Then I'm gonna show you a buttery smooth Italian meatloaf that has aromatics that are sauteed and pureed with bacon inside. And then this party delicious wonder pinwheel stuffed prosciutto wrapped meatloaf. And once you learn how to make all three of these recipes, you're gonna learn what meatloaf is all about. Today I'm making our easy classic meatloaf. And what do you need for that? First, meat. It's in the name, silly. In this case, we're using beef. We're gonna add a number of things to the meat to transform it into meatloaf, right? First, we're gonna add some eggs. The, the yolk adds a lot of fat which makes it very luscious and moist. And the whites help the whole thing stay together. It binds the meat together. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add breadcrumbs. As the meat is cooking, the water is basically running out. It's going everywhere. With the breadcrumbs are there, they act as a buffer. So when the water is trying to get out, it can't escape. And these breadcrumbs absorb the water and they swell almost like four or five times their size so that it is it retains the moisture. Whew. That's why you add breadcrumbs. Now we're gonna add some milk. The next thing we're gonna do is add onions. We're gonna be adding ketchup. We're gonna be adding something called burger seasoning. Burger seasoning should be up to your own taste. This one is super cool though. It has coriander and paprika and cumin. You know, it smells something like something from Northern Africa. It's really wonderful. So this is kind of a secret weapon, but customize it to your tastes. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna mix it up with my hands. Squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. Our hands are much better than using a wooden spoon. We're ready to put this lovely meat mixture into the oven, okay? This is a technique I learned from my mom, Linda Coleman, who is a neat freak! She wants to be able to lift this out and have a nice clean pan and get cleaned up as fast as possible. Anyone that knows my mom knows this to be true. But it just makes things nice and easier as you pull out to rest it. And yeah, you don't have to do as much scrubbing. So now I'm gonna next add the meatloaf mixture here. So this, this pan is basically the perfect size for the meatloaf. It is going to shrink back as it cooks, right? The other thing we have to watch is temperature. When you overcook a meatloaf, it's not gonna be as tender as we want, right? It's gonna squeeze everything out. These binders, these ingredients that we're adding, breadcrumbs, eggs, dairy, they are, are protectors of good flavorful meatloaf, but they can't completely defend, right? Overcooking it is like when you knock down the castle wall and then everyone just runs in, right? You can defend, but you can't hold back everything. You still, they're your friends. They're helping you. But you, the thing that you need to do is not overcook it. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the oven, 350 for about an hour. You know, I'm gonna watch it to make sure that it doesn't overcook. And now we're gonna make the glaze. Kind of the best part. If you've seen the movie Wall Street, you've heard the term, Greed is good, but if you watch one of my videos before, you know that the glaze is good, all right? So to make a glaze, the first thing that you need is something sticky, right? In this case, we're using honey. Thank you, bees. And then it's gonna have an extra special quality from Worcestershire, which is just a really potent potion. I bet you never looked at the back of Worcestershire bottle. You know what's in here? Tamarind, anchovies, garlic, molasses. So we're gonna add some droplets of that. Then we're gonna add ketchup, which is gonna add the tang. So we're gonna mix, start mixing this up a little bit. Now we're gonna add our mustard. Glaze is good. That's a good line, glaze is good. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you want a t-shirt with glaze is good, your new motto and mine on a t-shirt. All right, so the meatloaf is out of the oven. Gonna put on the glaze now, okay? Now, we have our glaze on our meatloaf. We're gonna put this back in the oven and let it get nice and crusty on top. Again, we want it to caramelize. It's gonna take about 10 minutes, okay? Let's put it back in. So here we have our classic easy meatloaf. I've removed it from the oven. I let it rest for about 10 minutes. We see it's nice and brown. We're using my nifty handles that I learned from my mom, right? To move it onto the board. 
You can see here when you're pressing down onto it, it's firm but still gives a little bit. Let's cut into it, okay? Looks nice and beautiful inside, look. It's not dry, has a little bit of juice. I'm gonna do a little taste test on the edge here. Mmm, that is so good. Savory, sweet and tangy from the glaze. Mmm, mmm. All right, now we're gonna make a sandwich. The MLT, right? Meatloaf, lettuce, and tomato. If you think this looks good, wait until you see my Italian meatloaf. Oh, it's gonna blow your mind. All right, so now we're gonna make our Italian meatloaf. So we're gonna up things up a little bit. We're gonna turn it up to 11. You're gonna see some similarities, but you're gonna see some differences. I'm gonna explain each one, so try to stay with me. So first, what we're gonna do is we're going to saute some veggies to be inside. They'll act as a buffer and also provide texture and more flavor, okay? So, we're not only going to add these classic aromatics, again called mirepoix in French, if you care. I don't really. We're gonna be adding some mushrooms, okay? Why mushrooms? Because they are packed with umami, but they're also spongy. So they're gonna go inside to kind of boing, 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 add some kind of elasticity and sponginess inside of our meatloaf. In our classic meatloaf, it's just beef, a couple other things, just kind of working on its own. Here, we're going a little more upscale. So we sauteed our veggies. They smell amazing. So now we're gonna add them to the bowl to let them cool. In the first recipe, we did dried breadcrumbs, right? In this recipe, we're taking it a little bit to another level like we are in each element for this meatloaf. And we're gonna make our own breadcrumbs from fresh bread, right? We're gonna just throw them into a food processor and pulse them into breadcrumbs. It might seem like such a humble, simple ingredient, but it's not. Not done with the food processor. We are going to be now adding our cooled veggies in here, right? Now we're gonna be adding some ground beef. Why are we adding pork? No matter how fatty the beef gets, it's not that fatty enough to really protect itself completely in a meatloaf. The enemies of bad cooking and bad flavor are outside the castle walls, and these ingredients are helping us to retain moisture and flavor and texture. Pork is very flavorful, but it's also very fatty. It's also going in with the veggies, right? So this is gonna help emulsify all of it. And then we are also going to be adding bacon, because bacon is what? The most, it's one of the most flavorful ingredients in the world. Then we're going to add our Italian seasoning, salt and pepper. I can use the pulse. So I know in the first meatloaf, the easy classic, I said, use your hands. But why, Todd, are you using a machine now? It's the opposite of what you said because we're making this one a beautiful emulsion, right? This is like a sausage, all right? It's like getting closer and closer to almost like the texture of a hot dog. And here's a little trick that you don't have to do that they use to make hot dogs, right? If the mixture is cold, it will emulsify more. Emulsification is like the joining of two ingredients, like a hollandaise or an ingredient. One thing, the oil suspended into the other, right? Fat suspended into the protein here. We add a couple of ice cubes, touch of ice water. This will get even tighter and more emulsified. So it's a little trick that's not in the recipe, but you should try it out. It's a Todd exclusive. So you can hear the ice getting ground up in there. You can feel the temperature of the uh, emulsification dropping. If it gets really hot before it goes in the oven, it'll become fatty and kind of separate. Okay, that is a Todd tip there. This is a very different texture from the first one. It's sort of aerated, fluffy from being the food processor. It has our veggies in there, buffer texture, deliciousness. So let's add the rest of our ingredients because we're not done. We're adding our fresh breadcrumbs, right? We're gonna add heavy cream instead of milk. Okay, we're gonna add some of our Worcestershire inside soy sauce. And we're gonna add two eggs, a little bit of salt and pepper. We're gonna mix this up with our hands. 
some people might think, oh, this is too wet. It's not, we have these, all of these ingredients that are gonna help keep it firm and bind in the moistness, right? This feels really great. So now we're gonna take our pan, and instead of a loaf, we're using a sheet pan, right? I talked about that earlier. It's gonna be in a mound and more surface area exposed, so it's gonna brown more evenly, like a roast or a roast beef, versus the loaf pan, which is gonna have straight sides and it's gonna sort of steam in, in there. And I'm gonna put it into the oven, 40 minutes. Now we're gonna make the glaze, all right? So we're gonna take ketchup like the first one. We're gonna add mustard like we did before. Then as a little secret touch, we're gonna be using aged sherry vinegar. We'll whisk this all up. Glaze is good, remember that, glaze is good. Okay? The way that you know a glaze is ready is when it's all whisked together and smooth, people. Okay? Let's get our meatloaf out of the oven. We're going to now add our glaze to this. This is a slathering technique, all right? You can't go wrong here. Make sure every bit is covered, okay? We're gonna go back into the oven and cook it until it's glazy, people. So here we have our Italian meatloaf. I let it rest. It's super moist, it's glazed. Again, it has more browned areas because it's not in that loaf pan. Okay, we're gonna pull it off the parchment paper onto our cutting board. This looks amazing. Let's do some nice slices. Here we go. Wow, you can see this has a paler, smoother texture inside because it's been sort of aerated and smoother, more like a pate. This has our spongy mushrooms. This has our soy sauce. This has our heavy cream. We've not overcooked it, so it's still emulsified. It's holding, it's suspending. It hasn't all tightened up from overcooking and expelled all of its juices. So it looks really lovely. Mmm. This is so moist. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, this is so good. Beautiful. And if you think that this is amazing, wait till you see my stuffed pinwheel prosciutto wrapped meatloaf. Now we're moving on to the creme de la creme of meatloafs, all right? This is the prosciutto wrapped stuffed meatloaf, okay? Again, we're gonna start with our meat. We're having beef. We're gonna add some sausage into it, right? Pork, beef, seasonings. So we're mixing the sausage into the sausage, essentially. Very meta. We're gonna add some of our breadcrumbs. Now we're gonna add some eggs. This, we've grated some onion, some garlic. Choo, 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 choo. We're adding our Italian seasoning. Now we're gonna add some salt and pepper. Okay. I'm gonna mix this bad boy up. Squeezing. Soundorama is on. We're gonna transfer this to our sheet tray. All right, we're gonna pat this. You wanna leave kind of like a one inch border. Great. We're gonna start filling our meatloaf. We're gonna add some pesto. And then start spreading. We're gonna add some fresh basil here too. Now we're gonna add roasted red peppers. Again, very Mediterranean. All right, very colorful, right? I'm gonna add the cheese on the top. That's gonna help seal and keep these things sticky. Then we're just gonna pat to seal everything. Pat, 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 pat. Now we're gonna grab the edges here and we're gonna roll it up to make our meatloaf pinwheel, people. All right, tighten it up as you go along. This is just like a party favor. If you like meatloaf as party favors, this one is for you. Now we're going to put a fresh piece of parchment paper down and we are going to start our prosciutto wrapping of this. That's how you make a meatloaf even better, by adding more meat, right? Now we're going to unroll our meatloaf into the center. I'm gonna fold them in, fold it over, fold it over, fold it over, fold it over. So we've added prosciutto as a wrapping for this, right? It's keeping it moist, it's making it look beautiful. It's a nice, tightly wrapped package that will look very beautiful when you drop it on the table. So this one is going to go into the oven for about 40 minutes. We have our prosciutto stuffed wrapped meatloaf here. It's firm, 
but it yields a little bit. My mom used to always cut things like this with a uh, electric knife when I was a kid, so I thought I'd try it out. Oh, it's like butter. Look at that beautiful pinwheel, people. This meatloaf is the ultimate. You can invite the president over for dinner for this meatloaf. This is so beautiful. It's so elegant. Wow, look at that bad boy. Look at that molten cheese. The pesto. Wow, look at this. This is a thing of beauty. It is what they call a beaut. Mmm. Whoa. People, get out of here. I'm so good. Oh. I promised you that you would learn how to make meatloaf, and I've delivered. Tell me in the comments how much you love this. We'd start with the classic most easy. This is the one we know and love. Showed you how to make it. Told you why we were adding these ingredients. We're not just bulking it up so we can feed more people. We need to add these other ingredients to to bard, to bind, to moisten, right? And this is, you know, the ultimate one, but you know, you also might love the middle one that I made, the, the Italian one, right? That was beautiful, so moist. Literally, when you bite into it, you can taste the trap moisture. That's just heading inside, just clinging inside, right? It just explodes in your mouth. Meatloaf is comfort. Meatloaf is a all in one pan meal. Just don't overcook it, please, okay? You want to do follow all the steps, just trust me, watch it in the oven, pull it out early, and you're gonna be fine, and it's gonna be delicious and moist and tasty.